This is James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. And this is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, and we'd like to welcome you back to this edition of The New World Next Week at NewWorldNextWeek.com, where, of course, you can always find high-quality and low-quality video and audio versions of this uh, broadcast and podcast. And you can also find it at ParadigmShift.tv, broadcasting out on the Sky Satellite Network. So once again, welcome back to this edition of the New World Next Week broadcast. And this week we have something a little bit different lined up for you. Of course, we usually go over three stories uh, that are breaking in the coming week or in the week that's just passed. But of course, we are at the end of 2011 here, and it is time for those types of retrospectives that we're seeing all over the, the mainstream media and the alternative media. So why not get in on that? And this week we're going to be bringing you uh, well, we've, we've set up this way. James and I have both selected one story that we think is uh, an underreported story from 2011 that needs more attention, and one story that, or one trend that we think is going to become an important story or an important trend in the coming year in 2012. And uh, we've both selected our stories, but we haven't told each other what they are, so this is going to be fresh for us as well as uh, for you. So we're going to start with uh, James and your story for what you think was underreported in 2011. It's, it's so difficult, as I'm sure, James, you probably had to stew and think about a lot of different things of what were the, the, the stories. And for me, there were things that I had to kind of push, push aside and realize that they didn't affect you know, the mass populace. And this is something that for the last couple of years I've been focusing more on and, of course, even giving it its very own website and, and blog. And it's called foodworldorder.com. But I'm going to take my story from actually the, the list of the past year's most censored stories, but I've added in links of my own, and of course all, all our links and all our sources and citations will be included in the show notes. U.S. agencies trying to outlaw GMO food labeling. Concern is, of course, growing over GMOs and eating GMOs. Most studies are done by the GM companies themselves, so of course you can't rely on anything factual, it may be biased research and reporting. Countries like Japan, Australia, China, and the European Union, of course, recognize the risks and require labeling for products that contain genetically modified organisms. However, here in the good old USSA, the FDA and the USDA says this, there is no difference between GMOs and non-GMOs. These agencies have also proposed to the Codex Alimentarius Commission, the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, that no country should be able to require mandatory GMO labeling on the food items. FDA, USDA say that mandatory labeling of GMOs is, quote, false, misleading, and deceptive, implying there is a difference between GMO and non-GMO ingredients, end quote. Ultimately, the FDA and USDA want to do away with product labeling standards overall, trusting corporations to maintain necessary health standards. And I will provide a link to the non-GMO project, non-gmoproject.org, where you can see the massive lists of companies who are enrolled and, and are participating in this non-GMO product. So when you go to the store, you can search out things and you can make these decisions for yourself. So James, I would just say that in a world where people have sued a movie this past year for false advertising, what does it say when we don't pay more attention to the food that we're putting into our bellies? Excellent choice of uh, stories there, because that truly is such an absolutely base story that's so important that really has slipped under the radar to a large extent. Um, and it, it's so obvious to me that health freedom and food freedom is really the basis upon which we have to predicate all our freedoms. If we don't have freedom of control of what we put in our body and, and even how we label the, the foods and things like that, I mean, it's just such an absolutely key bedrock topic that doesn't get a lot of attention, at least in the GMO aspect of it anymore. But um, but we have seen some positive things on the food freedom uh, front. Not not obviously things like the Rossum food raids and things like that, but at the very least that did generate, that story generated a lot of headlines. So there is some some hope to this and, and hope that I think this will become more of a trend in 2012, even looking ahead, because I think more and more people are picking up on the importance of this. So, so I, I guess there are some positive things to take away from this, but you're exactly right that this is just such a huge story that hasn't been reported on enough. And I'll throw in and, and include other links to uh, an article from farmwars.info from earlier this year that I think will blow your mind. If you'd like to learn more about the Codex 
Almentarius Commission, you should read the article, The Codex Fluoride Auschwitz Monsanto Connection, and it will blow your mind, open your mind. So, James, do you want to now do your story? Do you want to hear my, my honorable mentions? Uh, let's do the honorable mentions. I'm curious. Okay. Okay. I was I was really surprised throughout the year, and I kept periodically checking throughout the year, but there's no updates beyond, I think, you know, February of 2011. That was the strange death and murder of John P. Wheeler III, a Council on Foreign Relations and MITRE insider found dead in that Delaware landfill. Folks might remember that story from earlier in the year. Council on Foreign Relations connections, MITRE, he was in, you know, Reagan and W. Bush cabinets. MITRE, it might be worth noting, is connected to P-TECH, James, the 9-11 software company. The most recent thing was from February from the Daily Mail where distraught widow claims Pentagon aid killed by hitman. But that's the last we've heard about any of that story. And the other one I'd love to mention, of course, while you were distracted by Osama's corpse, the Fukushima disaster continues. Well, there you go. And uh, again, that uh, that Wheeler story, very fascinating. And it, I, it had even slipped my mind that that even happened. That was a really interesting story that kind of did just disappear off the radar. So I hope someone will pick that up and, and maybe look more into it. But of course, on that last note, um, obviously, I've been thinking a lot about what's been important over the past year. And obviously, being here in Japan, what else could I talk about other than Fukushima, which certainly wasn't an underreported story, so I, I'm fudging a little bit, but I'm going to take a specific aspect of the Fukushima story to talk about how it's been underreported. And that's specifically the idea that the, or the, the fact that there was a meltdown at reactors one, two, and three. And that was a fact that was known within hours of the, uh, the earthquake itself and uh, was known by TEPCO and was withheld from the public for two months. Uh, the first admission that there had been a meltdown came on the 12th of May. So literally for two months, there was a complete blackout on that story because no one knew about it. So in that aspect, I guess uh, it really was un underreported, unreported even. Um, but uh, to me, that's kind of the encapsulation of the Fukushima disaster in a nutshell, is that, uh, that there's been information withheld uh, for, for startling periods of time, uh, information that would very much have affected people's understanding of the situation and their ability to react to the situation. And that's just one example of it. We've seen many, many other examples coming out with uh, admissions later on that, oh yes, X amounts of, uh, of, of radioactive cesium has leaked into the Pacific Ocean, and oh yes, so the initial estimates for how much uh, atmospheric fallout there was was actually woefully underreported. There's actually much more. We've seen that m happen again and again and again, and that's something that I've been trying to cover at FukushimaUpdate.com as the information comes out. But I think the unreported or underreported aspect of this story is all the information that's been held back or mis intentionally misreported, I think, uh, by the authorities in order to try to downplay the situation at every turn. So uh, so again, it's not exactly an underreported story. Certainly there's been a lot of media coverage of Fukushima, but I think the, the manipulation of the information that's been coming out of that disaster has been the most worrying and troublesome aspect of it all for me. And, and in a way, I think both those stories are connected. You would think that radiation and genetically modified organisms going into our body would be the biggest news stories every day in all the newspapers around the world. But James, what are your, do you have any honorable mention notes for 2011? I was trying to think of uh, various stories, but but honestly, um, uh, Fukushima has been a huge preoccupation of mine, and, um, and obviously the Arab Spring and the various things that have been going on with those types of uh, underhanded dealings and, and setups and things like that. So I've been looking at those stories for so long that I think that's all I see. In terms of really obscure or underreported stories, I, I just, I haven't been able to dig up anything that was as interesting as the ones you did, so, so I failed at that mission. <laughs> well, and, and I think that's why I didn't include something like John P. Wheeler as, as the main story, because I do find a lot of the other kind of, you know, what we'd call crashes of convenience or, or mysterious deaths of people connected to the sort of upper echelons. I, I always find interesting, but again, ultimately don't affect the, the mass populace. So, James, let's get back to the future and look at possibly what, what you and I think may be some of the bigger stories in the coming very soon 2012 and if my first part came from one of the sister sites in the media monarchy kingdom, Food World Order, the other one comes from another site, cyberspacewar.com, for a weather report. Project Bluebeam in the air or pay your carbon taxes or space aliens will attack. 
I don't know that that many people noticed how many mouthpieces of the establishment in the past year are talking about some type of alien or extraterrestrial or space event, whether that's Michio Kaku or Paul Krugman basically repeating the Ronald Reagan idea that, gosh, wouldn't it be great if aliens came down and us and the Russians will all get together? And Krugman even said in an in a op-ed earlier this year that maybe aliens coming would you know, help, help our economy. You can dig into the background of Nazi Werner von Braun brought over to the United States to help with our space program and Project Paperclip. A doctor named Dr. Carol Rosen, she's done a bunch of work and worked with Werner von Braun, who basically said the weapon of, weaponization of space is the ultimate goal and essentially a, a one-world planetary government, but that they would do it through three steps, and that would be communists first, then terrorists, then nations of concern, then asteroids, then finally aliens. I am not saying aliens are coming in 2012. I'm saying they're going to continue to ramp up this sort of disclosure and let you know that, yes, there are bodies out there that are, that are not of this earth, and the Vatican will say it's okay to believe in aliens and, you know, our economists and our op-eds and our, and our leaders. And that I kind of see as a trend. And we can even look in the news today, massive solar storm could knock out radio signals over the next three days, warns scientists. James. Well, that's, that is an interesting point. I went out on a limb. <laughs> well, but I, I agree. I think you're absolutely right. There has been such a growth in the rhetoric about this, uh, this uh, you know, alien threat and or alien help or whatever it is has been ramping up for years now. And it's really come to a head over the past year. And that actually mm -hmm. spurs in my mind perhaps an underreported story of 2011. Wasn't the, the Vatican, didn't they come out this year and say that they would baptize aliens? Mm -hmm. uh, just all these types of bizarre stories. And there was the UN representative ambassador to other planets or whatever. And, and all this oh, yeah. kind of God. just bizarre stuff going on. So I think you're right. There is definitely, at the very least, they're setting up the, the cards. And who knows if they'll knock the house down or, or what they'll do with it. But they're definitely planning something along those lines. So once again, hats off to you. I think that's a, that is a very interesting trend to keep our eye on. And James, I think we're kind of running out of time. So, so what oh, we your... are. Oh, wow, time flies. All right. So basically, um, my my idea for a trend for 2012 is censorship. I think censorship is going to become mm -hmm. more and more of an important issue in in all sorts of different ways. But of course, the one that's on everyone's mind right now at the end of 2011 is the SOPA Act, and there's the Protect IP, and and I'm sure even if this gets defeated, uh, they'll they'll bring out something else again and again and again. It's a war of attrition, and it's really they're just waiting until we finally give up fighting and uh and I, i'm not sure it's going to happen in 2012 that, that definitively the internet will be changed forever but i think that's going to be more and more of an issue and something that's going to be more and more in the media and in the spotlight and getting attention and uh not just censorship in the in the straightforward sense of of but also the, all the different types of tricks they've been playing over the last year of uh of uh, ice trying to take over websites and re redirect domains and things like that so there's all sorts of different ways they can do it. And I also think the man manipulation of information is going to start becoming more, more blatant over the coming year in the various ways that they, uh, they, they will start to try to massage and manipulate stories, uh, even in more, more and more blatant ways. So I think just the, the manipulation of information and the censorship of access to that information is going to be an extremely important trend for 2012 and one that I will be keeping my eye on at the Corporate Report. So, James, just briefly, and we'll include this link, ZeroHedge.com did another 2012 things that will happen list that includes everything from Obama dumping Biden and adding Hillary and Ron Paul running his third party and Green Bay beating Denver in the Super Bowl and all sorts of things. We will include that so people can check out that massive list. And I'll just throw out the mention here. I've got my favorite music of the year, my best of mixtape coming this weekend from MediaMonarchy.com, in addition to my big year-end episode 245. Looking forward to it, and I'll be back on Corbett Report Radio next week, and I'll be uh, coming out with more videos in, in the coming days. James, this is our second full year of doing NewWorldNextWeek.com, and again, I can't express how, how much I enjoy doing these shows with you, so thanks so much, man. And let me just throw out my appreciation to the viewers and listeners out there. Thank you for all your support. All right. Take care. Take care.